Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Population Data Science webinar series. My name is Anne Greenman, and I'm the Education and Training Lead for Population Data BC. Today, it's my pleasure to introduce a panel of presenters that will be speaking on developing a multi-jurisdictional comparable measure of osteoporosis screening performance from administrative data. Panelists who will be speaking today include Sabrina Wong, Jackie Cooper, and Wasim Al Saab. By way of introduction, Sabrina Wong is a professor at the University of British Columbia's School of Nursing and Center for Health Services and Policy Research. Her research examines the organization and delivery of health care services within the context of primary health care. A recognized leader in research involving patient reported quality of care, her work contributes to informing practice and system level interventions that seek to decrease health inequities among Canadian residents. And this includes people who face multiple disadvantages in accessing and using a healthcare system, such as those who have language barriers and live in poverty. Jackie Cooper is a PhD candidate in Western, at Western University, studying epidemiology and computer science. Her primary research includes integrating these two fields to develop apply and evaluate methods for supporting care decisions with primary health care. She is a recent graduate of the Pan-Canadian Transdisciplinary Understanding and Training on Research in Primary Health Care. During the program, she became a trainee of the Transformation Study. Previously, she completed a BSc at McGill University and an MSc at Western University. Wasim Al Saab received his Bachelor of Science in Pharmacy from Damascus University, Syria in 2000. He moved to Canada in 2004 and received his PEBC and Ontario license in 2006 and practiced as a hospital pharmacist until 2008. Then he started his PhD from the University of Saskatchewan. He received his PhD and started his appointment in the School of Pharmacy, University of Waterloo in 2015. Wasim's research focuses on administrative databases, pharmacoepidemiology, drug safety and effectiveness, and pharmaceutical medicine. His recent work relates to the potential impact of pharmacists' expanded scope emergency department visits in Ontario. So thanks again everyone for attending, and I'll now hand the presentation over to Sabrina. Perfect. Thanks, Sam, for the wonderful introduction and um, we can get started with this presentation. So we just move to the next slide. Uh, we just want to say that this research was funded by the Canadian Institutes for Health Research and um, this is known as the Transformation Grant. The, uh, we have nothing to disclose in terms of uh, getting funding from other sources or So today we're going to have an outline. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the transformation study and some background and context. Um, and then I'm turning it over to my esteemed colleagues to talk about what the challenge was, what our solutions were, um, the methods that we used, some results, and then uh, we'll move on to talking about some of our lessons learned and uh, potential recommendations moving into the future. Okay, so um, the transformation study is uh, was looking at um, basically improving the science and reporting of performance in primary care. We had two overall objectives. One is to develop the infrastructure for comprehensive reporting of primary health care um, at for regional level reporting, and also to obtain insights from patients and clinicians and decision makers on primary healthcare performance measurement and reporting. So we collected data uh, in three different regions, Fraser East, British Columbia, Eastern Ontario in Ontario, and then Central Zone in Nova Scotia. There were multiple different components that we uh, tackled this with. First, um, we did some regional case studies to understand the context. We also uh, completed a practice-based patient and provider surveys. And these are the surveys that are linked to health administrative data. 
And then we also did day long deliberative dialogue with patients. So this is uh, what we're coming up with in terms of trying to come up now with a reporting, a way to report on performance in primary care. So we call this a portrait of performance in primary care. And um, these are, uh, we're trying to do this for uh, looking at it in terms of multi-level reporting. So can we report at the clinician level, at a clinic level, and at a regional level? And primarily our uh, results will at this point be reported at a regional level. But I did wanna point out to you um, that in terms of this diagram, which is showing you different uh, pillars of patient medical home, that the yellow circles are the ones where we can use administrative data to tell us about timely access, comprehensive care, and also continuity of care. So uh, before I turn it over, I just want to let you know that we're doing some administrative data work also on reporting. And uh, we have a paper that will be coming out soon looking at how we've segmented the population using administrative data. And um, we've also done this by um, socioeconomic status by using income quintiles. So we've come up with four different segments of the population, low need, multiple morbidities, medically complex, and then frail. So this is also some of the work that we've been doing to try to improve the science and reporting of uh, performance in primary care. So I'm going to turn it over now to Jackie. Hey, thank you so much, Sabrina. Um, yeah, so for this particular project, so it's part of the transformation study, um, and what we're looking at, really going to go into more depth today, is comparing osteoporosis screening between the three provinces um, that were introduced. And so, um, the reason why osteoporosis screening is important is it is a key measure of population health. And there are guidelines out that everyone should start being screened for osteoporosis beginning at age 65. It's done with something that's commonly called a bone mineral density test, which can be ordered by primary care or specialist physicians. Um, and so these tests can be captured using health administrative data. So this is one component of the transformation study where it made sense to work with admin data. But as you may be aware, <coughs> sorry, uh, administrative data is not actually collected initially for research purposes. And that means that whenever we want to use it for research, there's pros and cons to this. So some of the benefits are that it is routinely collected. Um, and it, so it contains information from all patients who access the healthcare system. Um, and then it's also maintained securely and anonymously, and it's longitudinal. So you can get measures um, from patients over time and over their life course. However, some of the challenges that come with it are that there are not, especially when using it in between for multiple provinces, is that there's not the same types of physician billing practices or fee codes used in all jurisdictions. And also we can't pool the data, which means we can't take the data from Ontario, British Columbia, Nova Scotia, and put it all in one place and analyze it as a single data set. We need to actually do separate analyses in each province. And then another note, just thinking about primary care specifically, is that it seems to be there's a, maybe a bit of a gap there. So for example, there's no equivalent to the DAD or discharge abstract database that captures acute hospitalizations and it's shared by the Canadian Institutes of Health Information by most Canadian provinces. So the goal again is we wanna compare osteoporosis screening performance between these provinces, um, but it's not intuitive or necessarily an easy thing to do. So the main contribution of the work we're talking about now is sort of a framework of how do we actually do that? How do we arrive at an operationalization where we can create this measure in as many provinces as possible and then get meaningful comparisons? And I just want to make a note that while we're talking about osteoporosis screening and three particular Canadian provinces today, the overall process that we did and the methods and sort of the strategy can be applied 
to many other places and many other me measures. Okay, so this is the really sort of large scale, what, what was our approach? And so the first thing we want to do is, okay, let's develop an actual definition of a performance measure, which is a lot of work, and we're going to talk about that, um, by talking between the provinces and seeing what's there and what's not. And then each of the provinces will ideally compute that measure individually, and then we'll compare those results in the end. So that's the overall goal. And in terms of how to actually be able to do that, there's sort of four key steps, and I'm going to go into more details about each one. Um, but the first one is basically figuring out, are there any measures out there already that exist that we can use as sort of a baseline to work off of? Then of those that exist, is administrative data actually possible to use for it? And then can we figure out how do we actually create this measure in a way that can be operationalized in as many of the jurisdictions, in this case provinces, as possible? And then finally, look at basically how well did we do? Do we think our end product is comparable? Okay. So in terms of looking for performance measures that already exist, we did both a bit of a literature review and knowledge from the research team of what was out there. And we found one from ICES in Ontario is already routinely computing an osteoporosis screening measure. Um, however, there wasn't an equivalent thing in Nova Scotia or British Columbia um, that we found. And so we decided, okay, our strategy is we're going to use that ICS definition as our basis and figure out how can we sort of make something that would work between all the provinces. So I put that definition up there on the slide now um, with some things that are bolded that we'll come back to later. Um, but the initial one that we started with is rates of BMD testing in the previous 10 years for women 65 years and older, as well as testing adults aged 66 and older in the year following a fracture. So that's sort of like a high risk category. Then we also provide the OHIP billing codes. Okay, so that was step one. Step two is now, okay, can we use it in data? And in this case, the measure we actually found as our sort of baseline already was using administrative data. So the answer is yes, in Ontario at least, um, because it is captured through physician billing. And it's also possible to access these physician billing data with BMD tests at each of the individual provinces levels. So specifically through Population Data BC, ICS in Ontario, and Health Data in Nova Scotia. So now we come to a very challenging task, uh, which is to iteratively develop a measure definition that can be operationalized as many jurisdictions as possible. And probably the number one most important thing here is really strong communication. Because we have people that are working in different areas. There's not as much face-to-face -face contact, and you also have people with different skill sets working together. And so a huge part of this is making sure that we're communicating clearly and effectively. And so some of the ways that we did this is regular conference calls where we talked about things like data conformity, completeness, plausibility for obtaining comparable results across jurisdictions. And I just want to note that in terms of these things, looking at what data are there, what's the quality of them, that has to be done both within each province individually to figure out, you know, can we capture osteoporosis screening within each province? And then additionally look at, okay, now that we know what's possible within the provinces, can we actually create something that's also going to be comparable between the provinces? So that's a very big task. And sort of one thing that really helped a lot was maintaining some sort of a living document. And so this is one that could be accessed by all team members uh, in all three sites. And it contained, I, I mean, I suppose there were multiple documents, but there were a couple of key ones um, that everyone could work off of. So we recorded the communication that happened, decisions made. For example, if someone couldn't make a particular conference call, they can still come back and contribute and see what had happened. Um, we also talked about sort of specifics about what data elements are actually possible in each province and available, and then looking at to compare those between the provinces. Also noting down things like what are the contextual differences? Um, in terms of, you know, what are the standard practices for ordering BMD tests? And the, the context is actually really important for understanding the data elements, both in terms of what's there and what any given um, type of data means in a particular province, and also in terms of what's not there and why it's maybe not there within the provinces. Really trying to understand. 
And then finally, getting towards keeping the working updated definition of how are we actually going to specify this performance measure. And so the end measure is really just, it's a numerator divided by a denominator, so a, a proportion, which can be changed to percent. Um, and so the two key parts are a denominator, which is the cohort of interest. So everyone who, by the guidelines, really should be considered for osteoporosis screening. And then the numerator is who actually achieved that screening. And another important point um, is how long do we look? How long is there for people to both join the cohort and then get screened? And then finally, also, it's important to have sections for extra comments, questions, and thoughts. Okay. So then after we have sort of a, a, a prototype and a sort of semi-formal measure, we want to check really how well did we do? And so Maseem's going to get into some more details about looking about comparability in the discussion, but just some key things to think about are what modifications were made to the original measure definition that we started. And also, how easy was it for each province to achieve the final version, if at all? And so this is important both because the province is really needing to adapt and make a lot of changes to their standard processes and really move their data around a lot. It opens a lot of potential for error to be introduced, but it also makes it less feasible. So we created this measure within the context of, of the transformation study, but the end goal is that it can be used for years to come. And so if it's really a rigorous process for any given province to achieve at a final measure, that feasibility might make it less of a good option. So that's also something to consider. And then also getting into sort of the nitty gritty of what are the actual data elements that were used? Do they look comparable? Do we actually think we're getting the same types of people into our denominator and our numerator? Okay. So this is our end product. So on the left is our final definition. Um, so it was the percentage of people who turned 65 years old in the first year, and we went by a fiscal year, of a three-year study period who had a BMD test within that period. And so higher is better. And you can see our inclusion for a denominator is really anyone who's 65 years old or and who is living in that province um, for the majority of our period. And the numerator is just any billing code for BMD. And thinking back to our original ICS definition, we can already start to see some changes. Here we're looking at three years instead of 10 years, and that would see the data build early. And we also don't have a high risk criteria. And so this now is looking at what are the actual individual data elements that were available for British Columbia and Ontario. So these are the fee codes um, that were used as the billing codes. And so you can already see just by looking at it that on Ontario has much more granular data in this sense. Um, and you can see that they actually have specific codes that allow you to indicate someone who's high risk, whereas British Columbia does not have a special indication for high risk. So to be comparable, we have to collapse across all of these codes. And so this is where it kind of becomes a trade-off because both provinces are really losing information by collapsing across their codes. However, in doing that, they create something that should be capturing all of the BMD tests. So if our ultimate goal is screening for osteoporosis, and that constitutes any type of BMD test, then we should be capturing most, if not all, um, of the positive screens. So it's still a valid measure of what we want. However, there is a trade-off in terms of what was possible um, within each province individually. You may note that there was not a column for Nova Scotia. It's because we could not arrive at a comparable measure as much as we may have tried. And the, the primary reason for this is that bone mineral density tests are included in bulk billing uh, codes for part of the study period, which basically means a bunch of tests are lumped together. And it wouldn't be possible to figure out who within that denominator cohort actually received a test. So as hard as we may have tried, it was not possible, and we had to exclude Nova Scotia for this measure. Okay, so now just thinking about what are we actually going to do with that data? So the main thing is compute crude measures for each province, so that's just numerator divided by denominator, and that will go into those performance portraits that Sabrina mentioned. It's also possible to compute standardized measures for each pro province, which can help with comparisons. And then a, a third thing that can be done and, and for this particular measure, Ontario can do it, is checking for internal validity. So Ontario can compute their regular 
uh, metric for osteoporosis screening. And then they can also compute using our comparable definition of the measure and see how does the performance or the end results sort of change for both just within Ontario. And that can start to give an indication of measurement error, how well we're doing in terms of, in terms of capture there. Okay. And so now I'm gonna pass it over to Asim, who is going to talk to us a little bit more in depth into some of our challenges. Perfect. Thank you so much, Sabrina and Jackie, for uh, presenting. And I'll just go to my full screen here. Okay, so after doing this exercise, important lessons were learned about how to come up with a common definition of uh, measurement of uh, performance in primary care that can be applied in multiple areas. Now, the uh, key point that we found that is uh, extremely important is to have this ongoing communication between provinces. Now, the uh, definition of that measure uh, should basically be developed uh, inter provinces, meaning inter uh, different practice uh, systems, if you will. We know the Canadian healthcare system is composed of multiple provincial uh, uh, healthcare systems that has its own context, its own practices. So this definition has to be developed uh, among all of those provinces or among all those jurisdictions, but it should be uh, done uh, or oper operationalized in each province by itself. So this communication was essential to have uh, the common understanding of how the data can be used in a way to have a meaningful compared definition. Now, those data are recording uh, practices. So we have three uh, things basically. So you have how clinicians are doing the practice, how they are recording those uh, information, and how this information is appearing in the uh, data within the data custodian in each province. So the uh, persons that were uh, uh, put together, the uh, study team, basically had the analysts that really understand the uh, data elements in each province. So they could have a discussion about how the data appears in each province. And also the research teams members from each province that understand how clinicians practice those activities and how they record uh, the uh, uh, activities. So again, a, a thorough understanding of the data and practice context will be the most important uh, uh, factor that will uh, enable multiple jurisdictions to discuss how to define this measure and how to calculate the indicators. So is it possible? Is it meaningful? And then of course, to share the results and uh, uh, do it within province and uh, uh, among provinces. So the challenges that we found, uh, number one is there is no common uh, data model. Each province collects its data depending on its context. It stores it in a different databases. The way each data element is defined is different. So each uh, province should have somebody who is an expert of that data so they can speak of how to calculate this measure. And as Jackie just described, in terms of the data access and availability, each uh, province has different granularity, meaning some provinces had a specific code for high risk, for example, as opposed to low risk. Some provinces did not have that. So the discussion uh, went you know, to, should we keep that uh, granularity or should we combine all this data? Another important thing was the use of accessible data. Because remember the original definition that ICS uh, was using was for 10 years. Well, in order to have 10 years, you really need 10 years to look uh, uh, for a uh, look period. This was not possible in all provinces. Uh, another important thing was the computational resources. 
Now, we have three provinces with very different uh, resources availability in terms of uh, the personnel who are uh, available to do the research and the uh, computer uh, programs, for example, what we call macros and so on. So if you take, for example, Ontario, which is the most populous uh, Canadian province, uh, it has the ICS, the Institute for Clinical Effectiveness, Sciences, it has been established for several decades. It is well funded with available of uh, resources, and this might not be the same for the other two provinces. So, uh, as you have seen, uh, Ontario has already uh, 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 a defined uh, way to calculate this measure. Now, this way might not be possible to be transferred as is to other provinces. So we had to do this fine balance in terms of simplification of that measure in order to uh, be uh, comparable among provinces. Now, another important thing is that changes over time. So how clinicians practice, how they uh, record their uh, activities might change uh, from one year to the other. That's why it's important to have somebody who is not only uh, expert in the data itself, also expert in the practices and how they changed over the study period. So if some codes start to appear more frequently or less frequently, they can understand the uh, changes in uh, those promises and then they can understand the implications of those practice changes in each province, in each jurisdiction, so the changes in the data can be understood. Now, when we calculate the measure, the uh, comparable measure, uh, we had to look at the internal validity, meaning for Ontario, for example, uh, it used to uh, measure the proportion of people uh, who are 65 and older and then have a BND test. We uh, tried to calculate if uh, the new measure that we did for this study, that is the comparable measure, which is only those who turn 65 within the first uh, study year, if we use this, how comparable it's going to be uh, to the old measure that you are already doing. Number two is the measure uh, originally was differentiating between high risk and low risk. And when we reduced the granularity of data and we made it as a yes or no, did you have a BMD test or no, how change or how changed is going to be as opposed to the uh, original um, measure that you had already. So those internal validity uh, studies are important to see how much we are uh, sacrificing to simplify the measure in order to be comparable to other jurisdictions. And are we uh, okay with this uh, sacrifice in order to achieve the interprovincial uh, comparison? That's why we put here, we have to find the uh, fine balance and this delicate uh, trade-off between simplification of the measure and the comparability. And of course, the measure that we should come up with, uh, it should be still meaningful uh, to the clinicians and to the practitioners in that province. And we could see that basically by looking at the internal validity and comparing of what we already uh, measure in Ontario and how uh, changed it is with a new uh, defined measure. Now, of course, we still uh, have uh, limitations in our work that we have to acknowledge. Number one is the number of eligible days for BMD testing. So if you read the guidelines, it says that everybody who is 65 or older should be measured or have a BMD test. Now, in order to do, to do that, we looked at, at the available uh, uh, data for each province. Within the three years that is common in the two provinces that we end up with, uh, BC and Ontario, uh, we have the three years eligibility. Uh, for, uh, so we did not have a longer time uh, 
uh, to look at those who have uh, a test if they are more than 65. Let's take, for example, somebody who is 69 when the first fiscal year that happened. So if this person had received a test in the three years before, they are still meeting the guidelines that they had a test when they turned 65. However, because in BC we did not have that look back period of three years, we could not uh, look at this person who is 69. That's why we uh, chose to uh, include only those who turn 65, meaning they are eligible for the test. So it is uh, common uh, in Ontario and BC. Uh, so those who are 67, 68, and so on, they were taken out of the denominator and nominator as well. So it is not for every uh, one who is 65 plus, those only that turn 65 in the first fiscal year. Another important limitation in our study was the codes for the test did not specify what type of test was that. So uh, the one that we uh, were, uh, should or should be looking for is the dual energy X-ray absorbiometry. So the code itself does not uh, show what type of test this individual has. Is this according to the guidelines uh, type specifically or not? So it might or might not be. So this is a limitation in uh, the data. And of course, this is common among uh, a lot of uh, provincial databases. Those who are not covered by the provincial uh, health benefits because they are covered by the federal health benefits, such as members of the uh, armed forces, for example, uh, those who are uh, from an Aboriginal uh, population, they are covered by the federal health benefits. So their health services are not captured in the um, provincial health services databases that we were uh, using so they are not part of our population. So that's another limitation. So in conclusion, uh, our process of uh, international and uh, com uh, uh, continuous communication uh, process, we were able to come up with a multi-jurisdictional comparable measure, measure of the osteoporosis screening using the health administrative uh, databases. It is possible, but it takes a lot of work in terms of getting people together who are expert in the context in terms of um, clinical practice and how the data is built, so the data structure. And we have to have a continuous communication that we record all details until we come up with a measure that is both meaningful and it can be uh, operational in each jurisdiction so the comparison will be possible and meaningful and of course each province can do its uh, validity if it's used to do it differently and this also can feed back to the process of getting that measure uh, refined and be the most uh, accurate and robust uh, measure now in this work, we are presenting the osteoporosis uh, measure specifically, but it doesn't mean that it cannot be applied to any measure of the performance of primary care. So uh, we uh, think that this uh, way, this method of uh, defining the measure can be applied to any measure of uh, performance of primary care. So this is the paper that we uh, published that uh, talks about this work. And I think that's all in terms of what uh, we wanted to present. And I think we'll be happy to uh, answer any questions and I'll put it back to Anna. Great, thank you very much, Vaseem, uh, Sabrina and Jackie for an excellent presentation. Uh, I think it's very inspiring to learn about projects such as yours that have tried to uh, collaborate uh, uh, provinces across Canada and work together to, uh, to find um, 
meaning uh, and uh, trends in, in different kinds of uh, medical intervention and support. So uh, thank you very much for presenting on that and for all the, uh, the resources that you've shared. Um, we, we now have time if there's any questions from the, our audience in terms of uh, I'm particulars that you'd like to ask a bit more of, please use the GoToWebinar uh, panel to ask questions. And uh, maybe just in the interim while I'm waiting for that, um, I have a, a question. I know you've talked about uh, the skill sets and the, the, the necessity of detail-oriented work across uh, your, your project team. Um, can you speak maybe a little bit more to the specific skill sets that were needed at each of the sites and study sites to, to work effectively on this project? Because I'm sure there are other people may be interested in this kind of work who would be interested in, in just knowing, do, does our team measure up to what we need to do here? So I'll open that up. Whoever would like to answer that question from the team? I'll start and then the others can add in. Great, thank um, you. So, so yeah, skill sets required. So one is is this, the the analysts, right? So they need to be able to work with these large data sets and understand them, and to to really get into the nitty gritty of that. Um, and then there's also the we need researchers who have more of a measurement um, expertise in terms of you know what actually makes a valid measurement, what's a meaningful measurement, how do we do that? Um, and then we also need um, skill sets that are looking at, you know, given what we're trying to accomplish, should really understand the primary care landscape, um, both within each province and then also broader across Canada. Um, so yeah, so I, th I think it's a mixture and for the whole transformation study, it's really a mixture of, of quantitative and qualitative skills. Um, and people who, who do have different skill sets and different viewpoints um, and different ways to put an input in because really in order to, to arrive at our final measure, we also needed people who could try and poke holes in it to try and make sure it was as rigorous as possible. Great, thanks Jackie. Um, another question, um, could you discuss the, how the project might have been different if it were possible to pool the data between provinces? Um, so the project would have been different in that we would have been able to use one analyst and not work across three different analysts. So that probably would have sped things up um, potentially, uh, but that person would have had to have known everything in the kind of detail that we just went through across those different provinces. Um, that's one thing is to be able to have all the data together and then we would be able to do uh, potentially some other kinds of statistical modeling where the data are all in one data set and not um, having to try to compare when they're in separate data sets. Yeah, thanks. So I think a bit, just a bit more to that last point. Um, was I was just talking about kind of what are the types of things that we looked at in terms of comparability. So the ability to pool data, if the data are still coming, if the data are still in different structures and formats and have different contents in each province, it still is really important to have uh, a process of ensuring that they're comparable before they're pooled. And sometimes that's, uh, and Basim mentioned this, arriving at a common data model. Um, or thinking about more of a centralized instead of distributed databases. And so I think a lot of the things that we try to do here, a lot of the same principles would still be applicable. Um, it's just that it would happen more at the front end and then the actual computation of, of this particular measure wouldn't require as much assessment of comparability. It would happen at the more individual data level. So if you just allow me to add one thing, Jackie, that uh, getting this pool data will be something uh, very uh, work intensive in terms of the preparation phase where each jurisdiction will have to uh, be working towards standardization of uh, how the data elements are entered. So something like the discharge abstract uh, database where each province actually reports the diagnosis in a standard way, then the pooling will have 
uh, more ability, uh, as Sabrina has mentioned, that we will uh, do more statistical modeling and it will be uh, less resource intensive, so you can use one hour and so on, but it will take a lot of uh, standardization uh, efforts to come up with a common structure so they can all uh, pull together. Thank you very much. I, I can see that there's some complexity in terms of even the, the ideal example of pooling data together, not, not a simple task, but uh, always good to think about and maybe uh, hope for in the future and, and prepare, prepare in advance, as you mentioned, uh, still working through the differences in data is, is, a, is a big job. Um, one other question, just about um, the future. Any ideas about uh, future uh, performance indicators that you're working on that you'd like to, to see or uh, next steps for disseminating the information that you've, you've uh, gleaned here on this research? Um, so in the area of primary care, we're definitely working on those performance indicators, but we're looking at where is the best place to get those performance indicators. So we have a project where we're linking together electronic medical record data with the administrative data um, with other kinds of data. So I think indicators in the future uh, would be more reflective of what patients are doing in terms of their journeys um, across the system or across specific geographic regions versus um, just trying to create indicators within the administrative data. So we, in, in terms of primary care, we I think we have created a, as much of, as we can uh, a set of indicators that can be used with those data. And those data themselves obviously have limitations. Um, so in order to get to more comprehensive um, performance measurement, we would need to add additional data sources. Thank you, uh, Sabrina. Any other, um, just as I mentioned, the last part of the question, um, ideas for dissemination of your work? Do you have some plans for further dissemination? We are uh, working with the, the Canadian data platform. Uh, we would love to see how we could submit our harmonized indicators to their uh, repository for other researchers to use. Um, and then we're working on uh, publications, um, but obviously we think that, you know, working with the different data centers, so um, individually, you know, things like Population Data BC, ISIS, um, Manitoba Health Policy Center, um, these are now indicators that we have done sufficient work on that could be used and modified to other provinces' data um, to together work on creating a harmonized set of uh, primary care performance indicators. Great. Thank you very much, Rena. That sounds uh, like you have lots of, uh, lots of opportunities for the future in, in terms of collaboration, and I'm sure that would go a long way in terms of uh, helping further research as well. I would like to thank you formally uh, for uh, providing this presentation. Jackie, Sabrina, Wasim, I really appreciate um, everything that you've presented here and the time you've taken um, to share with our network. Um, thank you very much again, and um, uh, for, for everyone's benefit, we'll be recording this session and uh, posting it to our, our respective websites, and we'll let everyone know as, as soon as they're up. So thanks again, and uh, bye for now.